All right, what's up everyone? So I guess we have a very special video today because in this video, I'm actually going to be hiking up Mount Fuji. So I'll break up this video into two parts. The first half will be where I'm actually doing the hike. So you get to see what it's like on the mountain, um, staying in a cabin, the food that you eat, and then also the view from the top of Mount Fuji. And then the second half of the video, I'll provide some updated tips and tricks for the hike because at least for the 2024 season, there are a lot of new restrictions or requirements for the hike itself. And I'm assuming that those restrictions and requirements will also be placed in the future years to come. But yeah, if you're more interested in tips and tricks for the hike itself, uh, you feel free to skip to the end of the video. I won't be offended by that. But if you want to watch the rest of the hike as well, then just continue on here. What's up everyone? So not sure if you can tell, but today we're hiking up Mount Fuji. So currently I took the highway bus to each station and then I'm going all the way up to the summit. Now even though it is at the peak of summer, it is still pretty cold already on the fifth station. So I definitely recommend getting prepared, uh be warm and wear layers here. So, not too sure how far up we are right now, but we just ate to be first. Uh, Baffin area. Man, I'm pretty tired. Hair has so far been pretty rocky, pretty gravelly. So you definitely need good grippy shoes to walk up here. made it not even at the eighth station to almost the eighth station all right so right now i think we made it to the, the last hut on the seventh station it is going to be quite a while into the eighth station and so far the hike has been pretty strenuous it started off on just uh kind of like dirt and gravel and then after that you have to climb up a bunch of rocks uh it gets pretty rocky there so i think some sticks help or some really grippy shoes yeah the nice thing is that a lot of these huts sell a lot of food drinks and stuff like that so you get hungry or better still on the way think to buy those and the prices do get gradually more expensive as you go further.
so now we are slowly making our way through the A station. This is a uh, in the background. We got some more stamps. For the small space, lots of sleeping bags, not many people yet, good night.
Okay, so now moving on to the tips and tricks part of the video. So at least in the beginning of the video, I'm sure that you saw that we arrived at the fifth station of Mount Fuji, which is where I actually started the hike to the top of the mount. I will say that there are actually a lot of people who start doing the hike from the fifth station. There are a number of people who actually start from the very bottom, but that is a much, much longer hike. I would say that the majority of the people who come to Mount Fuji, they actually start in fifth station. And the next thing to know is that there are actually four different trails to hike up Mount Fuji. Each of them actually do have a fifth station, and that is the last station where cars are allowed. So no matter which trail you want to go on, there's going to be a fifth station that you can start from. And then the other thing to note is that each of these four trails, they do start their hiking season at different times of the year. And then in general, the hiking season starts around the start of July up until the start of September every year. And then the trail that we took was the Yoshida Trail, which I think is the most popular trail hiking at Mount Fuji and that's because it is the most easily accessible from Tokyo. There's a bus that takes you directly to the fifth station there where you can start and there are also a lot more mountain huts as well on that trail itself. And then I have also heard that the Yoshida Trail is also the most beginner friendly. It's not as strenuous as the other trails which um, I can't really attest to because I haven't tried the other trails but I will say that the Yoshida Trail is actually not as intense of a hike as I thought hiking Mount Fuji would be. And then since it is also the most popular, the thing to note with that is that there are going to be a lot more people there, which means they might have to wait in line a bit as you either ascend or descend the trail depending on how cramp the space is on that particular trail at that particular time. And then now moving on to the mountain huts, which is probably one of the most important parts of the hike. So there are going to be a number of mountain huts along the Yoshida Trail up to the top of the mountain. I think they start at the 6th station and then it goes 7th, 8th station. And I think that might go on the 9th station as well. Um, there is definitely one at the top, but that one is kind of hard to get reservations for. So uh, let's stick to the earlier one. So I think one tip is that you probably will want to book the mountain hut that is located the farthest up as you can. And that's kind of important because a lot of people, they book these mountain huts because they want to see the sun rise at Mount Fuji. The higher up their hut is on the trail, the later of a start you can take before you actually have to start hiking up Mount Fuji again once you rest. So that means you have a longer rest period as well. And also all these huts, they cost approximately about the same. They're about like 10,000 yen, which is... In the previous exchange rate, it was $100, so that's actually pretty cheap. The fee for the hut actually comes with the room itself. They give you dinner, and they also give you breakfast, too. I don't know what kind of food the other huts give you, but at least for me, um, I think they gave us curry for dinner, and then for breakfast, I forget. So yeah, it's a pretty good deal for Mountain on Mount Fuji. I will say that the accommodations aren't quite bare, though. It's basically just a bunch of planks uh, stacked on top of each other. Um, kind of like bunk beds, and they're just rolled up sleeping bags placed right next to each other. So it's not the most luxurious accommodation that you can have. I think there are some that are much better. Um, those probably cost more, and those probably also will be booked out the soonest, but there isn't really much that you actually need besides the place to sleep, and then they also give you food as well. So it's a pretty good arrangement, I think. Okay, so now onto booking the huts themselves. I think it kind of depends on the hut that you're trying to book. But in general, I believe most of them open up their reservation system starting in April, and this also will depend on the hut itself, but some of them will allow you to book online. Some of them will require you to actually call in before you can make a reservation. So with that, you're also required to speak Japanese. Um, so it really depends. There are a number of huts that do allow for you to book online. And they also have English options as well. That's one of the ones that I booked for my friend and I. But I guess as for anything that is more easily accessible, it's going to be a lot more difficult to get a spot at those. So I guess if you do know or have some friend who is living in Japan who can speak Japanese, and they can book it for you, that might also help as well. Yeah, moving on from that. So to actually start hiking on Mount Fuji, Back when I did it last year in 2023, there was a suggested donation of 1,000 yen, which is roughly $10 to actually do the hike. Starting this year, in addition to the 1,000 yen donation fee in order to sign up Mount Fuji, I believe there is also a mandatory requirement of a 2,000 yen fee as well. So in total, it's going to be 3,000 yen in order to climb Mount Fuji. And it's probably going to be pretty hard to get around that because they, because I believe they put up the gates now. Um, back when I was doing it, in order to get 1,000 yen donation, there are actually people kind of like standing by the entrance of the Mount Fuji hike and they'll usher you to a booth to the side before you begin and they'll take your donation there and then in turn they'll also give you a little kind of like pendant amulet thing that says Mount Fuji hike on there. I didn't have that so let me show you guys. Yeah so this is what it looks like. Stamp 2023 of Mount Fuji and then on the back you're also able to get the stamp with a date that you hiked as well. Since I have this with me right now uh, another tip is that a lot of people they end up getting these hiking sticks and hike on Mount Fuji with them. So the really cool thing about this is that every single hut that you pass along the way of the mountain, they do have special stamps that they sell that they will burn into your wooden walking stick. I believe each of these stamps, uh, they cost roughly like 500 yen. And some places will give you one stamp, some places that will give you two stamps. So my friend and I, we hiked up and we got stamps from every single hut that we got along the way. So 
this is a very, very nice souvenir that I can bring back home. And then one really cool thing is that, um, I guess it depends on which country you're coming from, but my friend actually was visiting from the US and it was pretty easy to ship this back home to the US from Japan. Basically, all you have to do is bring this hiking stick over to any post office. They'll not do it, but I would recommend going to the Tokyo Central Post Office, which is why Tokyo Station, um, that place will actually have the most English-friendly help, I believe, out of all the post offices in Tokyo. And basically what my friend did is that he brought this to them. Um, they knew exactly what to do with it. They kind of wrapped it up, put it in a poster tube kind of container, and then decided to ship it. Uh, I believe you have two options. There's air shipment or there's shipment by freight overseas. The overseas option will be the least expensive, but also the longest. The air shipment will be obviously the shortest, but also the most expensive. So my friend went with the C1 and it still got to him pretty quickly. So if, if you do want to get one of these hiking sticks um, and bring it along the way with you and collect stamps and bring back memories of your hike, then I would definitely recommend it. And then I will also say that hiking sticks in general, I really did not appreciate how helpful they were until I went on this hike. So I have gone a number of hikes previously, but I never used to have any kind of special hiking gear or any hiking sticks like that. But I actually found that this hiking stick was really, really helpful on Mount Fuji itself. Because I feel like the terrain of Mount Fuji, it's very rocky, gravelly, and you're going uphill a lot of the time. So it really helps to have something kind of Japanese to ground in front of you and then help kind of like boost you up. So this was a very helpful purchase. Even if you don't want the memories, even if you don't want to pay for all these stamps on the stick, I would definitely recommend getting some kind of hiking stick in order to help you with the climb itself. And this hiking stick, it actually comes in, I think like two or three different sizes. This is the long just size I believe that they have. They also have another size that's the smallest, which is kind of like this big, which is kind of just a handheld stick. You buy multiple of them and bring them along with GT in order to get all the stamps. And I think there's also one that is a medium size, which is just half the size of the stick. So it really depends on what kind of stick you want. I believe the longest stick is the most helpful for me because this is the one that is the most practical when hiking. So yeah, it depends what you want. And then you can also buy these sticks at a lot of these stores on the fifth station. A lot of them will be selling them. And they also all come with a different colored stick hood. I believe there is this green one, a light blue one, and a dark blue one. So I got this green one, my friend got the light blue one. So yeah, if you want a mountain stick, I would definitely recommend shopping around the shop at the fifth station first. And that's actually also a tip itself. So when you first get to the fifth station, it is actually recommended to stay there for about one to two hours first in order to kind of like acclimate your body to the temperature, the weather, the atmosphere of being that highly elevated before you actually start the hike. So you don't get any kind of elevation sickness as you ascend the mountain. And then also speaking of being prepared for the hike itself, I would definitely recommend bringing layers and very worn clothes. So when I first started hike on Mount Fuji, uh, at, the, at the fifth station, it was actually not terrible weather. It was slightly cold, but it was nothing compared to what it was at the top of Mount Fuji. So I did have a lot of layers on me when I first arrived. And as I was hiking, I did gradually take off a lot of them because it was getting pretty hot. But honestly, nothing along the way prepared me for how bad it was at the top of the mountain. It was really, really, really windy. And it was also very, very strong wind. I would see people actually get kind of like pushed or blown away by the wind itself. So I would definitely recommend wearing really thick clothes if you want to stay warm at the top. Yeah, of course, this also kind of depends on the time and season that you go. I think I hiked Mount Fuji right when the season started. So weather was not that great and we also did go for the sunrise so it is going to be a lot worse a lot when you're a lot colder a lot more extreme in the early mornings of the day as well and then once you get to the top of mount fuji there is actually going to be one hut up there that is that also kind of acts as a restaurant they sell ramen udon noodles and something warm to kind of fill yourself up with and keep yourself warm as it's kind of blowing and winding outside i will say that it's pretty crowded pretty popular because that's the only restaurant that's available there so you might have to wait in line a bit, but I think it's definitely worth checking out and be able to say that you actually had a meal at a hut on the top of Mount Fuji. And then also speaking of things that you can do at the top of Mount Fuji, there is also going to be a shrine right at the very top of Mount Fuji. I think it's like right as you go under the Tori Gates to the very peak of the mountain, off to the right side, there's going to be a shrine where you can buy little trinkets on Mount Fuji souvenirs as well. And also in addition to that, this is going to be a bit further away from you if you're going on the Yoshida Trail. But there is actually a post office on the top of Mount Fuji as well. So when I went, I actually really wanted to go to the post office because if you send a postcard from the post office at the top of Mount Fuji, they actually do stamp it with a special stamp. So it's a really nice souvenir to keep as well. But that post office in particular, they also sell certificates that say you successfully hiked Mount Fuji, which I really wanted to get. But when I signed up Mount Fuji and when I reached the peak of it, um, it was pretty extreme weather and it was really, really windy at the time. So the very peak of Mount Fuji, there isn't very much blocking you from the wind and there isn't very, and there isn't that great of a path that leads you from the tip of the Yoshida Trail over to the post office. So 
I didn't really want to risk it and try to walk from there over to the post office to get a certificate because I wasn't sure how dangerous it would be. But if you do end up at the tip of the mountain and you do want to go to the post office and the weather is more agreeable, I would definitely recommend going to the post office and getting a certificate. Or someone remember that you're from there, will they try and sell as some kind of keepsake for your hike? Um, I would definitely recommend, in addition to the clothes, to bring a lot of water. Um, it's a pretty long hike. You will get pretty tired along the way. You get pretty, you'll get pretty dehydrated. So having enough water is definitely really, really recommended if you're going on a hike there. So I believe that the recommended amount of water to bring is one and a half to two liters. Um, and I guess one thing to note is that if that is too much for you to physically carry, a lot of the huts that you pass by along the way, they will actually sell drinks as well. And they're honestly not as marked up as I thought they would be. Um, so if you don't want to carry that much water with you, I would definitely recommend purchasing from the huts there. And then one thing that I did notice is that a couple of those huts, in addition to actual cold hard cash, they accepted things like PayPay, pay, which was really interesting because I didn't think that they would have electronic payment systems that are like that on the hike. But I would definitely still say that bring as much cash as you can because you actually will need cash itself to use the bathrooms. That actually leads on to the next tip. So there are actually quite a lot of bathrooms along the hike to the peak of Mount Fuji. Each of those bathrooms, they do require donations from you and they will charge you in 100 yen increments. And usually they're unmanned. So you definitely don't want to bring bills because no one may be changed for that. You have to put the money into these little coin boxes yourself. So right before you hike on Mount Fuji, I would actually recommend bringing your 10,000 yen bills, going to one of those cash upon money exchangers and just getting a lot of coins so you can use it for the hike. Okay, so yeah, I guess moving on to new things that you should know about the 2024 restrictions for hiking on Mount Fuji. So I think the biggest thing is that they really, really want to discourage bullet climbers. So in order to do that, I believe on the Yoshida Trail, they've set up gates, but you're actually not allowed to enter the trail from 4 p.m. to 3 a.m. So if you do want to climb Mount Fuji, you have to come outside of those times. And then the other big thing to note is that in order to kind of combat overcrowding on the hike itself, they are limiting the number of climbers to 4,000 climbers a day. And they did say that once they reach 4,000 climbers a day, they will close the gates and not allow you to climb anymore after that. So again, if you do want to climb Mount Fuji, I definitely recommend coming quite a bit early in the day in order to kind of guarantee they get the spot. And actually for what we did, um, I believe that we took one of the early morning buses. I think they might've left at like 7.30 a.m. from Shinjuku. And then we arrived at the mountain base to meet at like 9 a.m. And then we started hiking from there. And I think it wasn't that long of a hike up until our hut. So fifth station to eighth station, I think we got there around like around maybe 2 p.m. Around maybe 2 p.m., which is when most people get there. And then you kind of just stay there. Um, there isn't very much else to do. So if you want entertainment, you get there, bring yourself. Um, but you stay there at that time, you get dinner, you sleep. Basically a little after midnight, you'll start the rest of your hike and go to the top. Because most people want to get to the peak of Mount Fuji to the sunrise. They will try to leave the huts a little after midnight because there is still quite a bit of ways from the hut to the peak. And sunrise is usually around like 4 a.m. So you do want to leave sufficiently early enough so that you get to the top before the sun actually arises. So that is the other important thing about getting to chat early enough so that you have enough time to rest before you actually start hiking again because there isn't actually that much sleeping time in between. And yeah, so I think the other thing um, that I forgot to mention earlier about the Yushi Trail itself, uh, when they require you to pay the 3,000 yen fee, there's actually an online registration system where you can pay in advance in order to actually book your spot for that day. I believe there are like 3,000 spots for that and there's 1,000 open spots for you to pay on the day of the hike itself. So if you do want to get into your spot and get through the gates quicker, then you want to do that online before you actually go. And I believe this kind of like payment system, the 2,000 yen entrance fee, that only applies to the Yoshida Trail. The other three trails, they only have the $1,000 recommended donation fee. But also in addition to that, um, the other trails besides the Super Shoe Trail, those other ones won't have huts on them. So they're kind of a bit harder um, but if you want to hike the Super Shibuya one, that was probably going to be a lot easier on you. Oh, and then also one other one other very helpful tip that I learned the hard way is that you should really invest in a pair of really good hiking shoes. I hiked up Mount Fuji in just regular old sneakers, which was actually pretty okay hiking up the mountain, but the problem was when I was hiking down. The trail hiking down consists of a lot of really small volcanic rocks which is very, very easy for you to trip on and slip on if you don't have shoes with really good grip. And I can attest that wearing sneakers was not a good choice, especially hiking down it, because I probably felt like 10 times hiking down it because my shoes just couldn't handle the gravel. But everyone else, they had pretty good hiking shoes, so they definitely had a much easier time hiking down than I did. Um, but I will say that the stick itself, it helped a lot hiking down because I was just kind of leaning on it as I was falling. So that was just very useful for me. And yeah, I think that's basically all the tips and tricks that I have 
for hiking up Mount Fuji starting in the 2024 season with the new restrictions in place. Um, if you guys have any other questions on how to hike Mount Fuji, definitely leave them down below and I'll try to answer as best as I can. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys went away with some really good tips on how to hike Mount um, Fuji. And I guess I will see you guys in the next one. Yeah, bye.